Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem and it has to do with FT8. Now I can imagine half of you are going, yes, I hate FT8. Well, that's not exactly the problem. FT8 has its place, but I've noticed something else that's been happening lately. So obviously since FT8 came out in 2017, it has taken everything by storm. Pretty much every HF band is dominated with FT8. You only have to go to uh, the FT8 frequency and you can hear all of the stations, all of the signals that are happening. You can decode them. You can basically work the world on any band at any time of the day, just about. And herein lies the problem. Only about two weeks ago did we hit probably the highest solar flux index that we're going to see of solar cycle 25. We're still, well, the jury's out whether we're at the top, at the absolute pinnacle or not. But we hit about 299 on the solar flux index. And in actual fact, there was an article by the ARRL which speaks about this record high solar cycle 25 maxima. And hitting that magical number of 299, the last time we saw anything of this kind of magnitude was back in about 2002. Two, I believe, when it reached over 300. So in about 22 years, it hasn't got to these kind of levels. Now, if you're wondering what all of this means when it comes around to HF propagation and whether the bands are open or not, I've done some videos on this and how to understand it, and I'll link to those at the end of this video. But for the meantime, the problem here in lies that everyone is still stuck on FT8. Now, to me, FT8 is a weak signal mode. So what that means is that when the propagation is not there or if it's marginal or if you want to know if the propagation is good enough to support something else such as CW or voice, I can use FT8 to check basically if the band is open. But a lot of the time I see stations just sticking exclusively to FT8 and not even trying SSB, not even trying CW. And I think a lot of people have noticed this when they go and tune across the bands and see that there's no activity and they think that basically it's completely dead when in actual fact it's the complete opposite. Someone once said to me, and I can't recall who it was, but they did say that the bands are always open no matter what time of the day it is from your location to somewhere else. You just need to make sure that that other person is on the air at the same time as you. And to increase the likelihood of that happening, the best thing to do is to get on and call CQ. Now, whether that's on SSB, CW, FM, whatever, just try it. So what I'm trying to say here is, is that the problem that we have with FT8 is that people are sticking to that. And it gets kind of boring and monotonous at times. Me personally, I do like to use FT8 on uh, bands such as 6 meters and 10 meters because then them bands are less likely to open during, uh, even during the solar cycle maximum. It's only limited windows of when that band's actually open. The thing about using FT8 is that I can then get a head start and a jump to know when the band's open. As soon as the signals, especially on other bands, on HF bands, start to creep up when they get up to about minus 10 dB or they get very loud in the speaker and you're hearing lots and lots of stations. For me, if I, learnt, if I knew CW, I would tend to move to CW or if they get above 0 dB plus you know, any signals that are plus in the meter, in the waterfalls, um, not in the meter, in the reported stations signal to noise ratio, anything that's plus, that's when SSB can start to become possible. And I think what we need to try to do is migrate from our FT8 habits of just sitting down at the computer and just, you know, endlessly working stations on FT8, although there is a place for that. If the signals are starting to get really strong, we should start to go back to some of these other modes. And I think that FT8 has just shifted the dynamics a little bit as far as contesting and even DXing. For those who are hardcore DXers, they enjoy the challenge of trying to work other stations DX contacts, whereas FT8 
it sort of be- means that you can do this with very low, small bits of power and it kind of, I don't know, takes the fun out of it, I guess. You can work DXCC really quickly, um, definitely with FT8, and it helps on some of the bands where you might be missing DXCC or you want to work all of those stations on. You know, for instance, I'm trying to work DXCC on 6 metres, 10 metres. Very, very hard to do on SSB because of just the nature of the band. So that kind of makes sense. But when you start moving down and shifting down to 20 metres, 40 metres, 80 metres, you know, (laughs) I mean, 80 metres, probably not, but 40 and 20 definitely. And those sort of worldwide HF bands, it makes just things a little bit too easy. The other thing that I also have a bit of a concern about is how the reliance on FT8 might reduce an operator's skill level or the enjoyment of trying to find stations that are, say, weak or in the noise. I know one thing that I've enjoyed in the past is working a station on voice on SSB, not being able to quite copy them just just down in the noise. So one of the things that I then try to do is try to make a better antenna system, improve my feed line, improve my station performance. So that the next time that I go to work that week station, perhaps it's a specific country or perhaps it's a specific station even that I'm chasing, it might be a de-expedition, might be a rare, rare country that I don't have, I get to update my station to be able to work them on that band. Whereas with FT8, I think that because it's such, you know, low, low below the noise, such low power, it makes it really easy to just pop up any antenna and work them with just a piece of wire. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I think that being able to hone your skills and learn something along the way is definitely something that I'm a little bit worried that FT8 might take away. And there's no doubt that ham radio is a very social hobby. So you get to, in a voice contact, traditional voice contact, or even a CW contact, you get to exchange pleasantries. You have the same interest as the other person on the other end of the radio. You know, you might be able to share your station, what radio you're running, what antenna you're running, anything technical like that, and actually have a bit of a conversation and develop that sort of social connection. Whereas with FT8, a little bit more automated, a little bit more stringent. Signal report, 5.9, move on to the next station. Again, I keep saying in this video that by itself, that's not a problem. But I think that if we become too reliant on that digital mode, we won't go back to the more traditional um, or we'll start to lack operators that want to go back to the traditional CW, SSB, FM, AM, other modes such as those. Maybe I'm completely wrong and, you know, you love FT8 and it's not going to be a problem or you agree with me. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see what your thoughts are on this matter. I know that FT8 is great for people that have sort of mic fright. They don't have to pick up the microphone and call CQ or make a contact. They can just, you know, use the keyboard, which is totally fine as well. But I think that some of us have become a little bit... I don't want to say lazy, but I am going to say lazy because I think that's what it's come to. I've been guilty of this myself where I've sat down after a long day at work and I thought I want to get on the radio and I want to participate and, and, you know, get on the air, but I don't necessarily want to pick up the microphone. So what do I do? I go straight to FT8, but I think I need to start changing my habits, especially now. The solar cycle, we're at the top. We're getting towards the top towards the end of this year, towards the start of next year, it's not going to happen again for another 11 years. We're going to go down, we're going to hit the bottom of the cycle and that's when FT8 is really going to come into it. When we're at the bottom of that cycle and we still want to keep that interest, we still want to make some contacts and even if they're fringe contacts on some of these bands, we're going to want to use that at the bottom of the cycle. But I think as we're starting to near the top, I think we really need to take advantage, especially on some of these other bands, um, the higher bands too, but even on the lower bands on 40, 20, you know, those bands where it's pretty easy to make SSB contacts. Now, I spoke also about SSB, but also FM's a good one. So on 10 meters, there's quite a massive FM portion of the band. There's FM repeaters, FM simplex. I know a lot of people hang out on here, but if you haven't done it, then definitely give it a go because it's a whole lot of fun. 
I remember a couple of years ago, one of the great things about the last solar cycle, back in around about 2013, 2014, working a South African station on 10 metres for a good three, four, five hours. It went on for ages. And uh, I was just using a halfway vertical, just 100 watts, and he was there all night. And I wish that I had have kept a log. I don't have a QSL card. I don't even know what the call sign was. So, I mean, if you're watching this and you remember either working my current call sign, I think I had it back then, VK7HH, or the previous call sign, VK7HA, Hotel Alpha, that was my old call sign, Then, and you're watching, then please let me know because I'd really love to uh, know what your call sign was because I just can't remember. But that's just one of the memorable things. That was on sideband. It, It went for about five or six hours. This is before FT8 before the digital modes and um, it was a whole lot of fun and it's still happening it's still happening now we just need to make sure that we're calling getting off ft8 moving away from that occasionally and getting on back onto good old-fashioned voice on ham radio and cw i don't want to miss out cw i'm not a cw operator myself because i haven't learned it yet but uh, don't want to also miss that out so get on some of these other modes as well if you want to find out more about solar cycle 25 how you can take advantage of it right now like as i release this video then there are some videos over here that i've done on solar cycle 25